years ago, I went to live in Zurich, uh, mainly because I wanted to understand how a city like that functions. You have to really live it to, to really appreciate it. The trams, all the lines every seven minutes, the coordination between the different systems, the buses, the trains, the ferries, the cable cars. Everything works to make a seamless system. I've never seen anything quite like it anywhere in the world. Most people, they come from outside, they, they came by train because you can hardly find a parking space for your car and we have so good uh, public transport system that you don't need to come with, with the car from outside. They're sending a message that you are invited, are welcome to the city, but your car is not. So we're looking at the numbers now, modes in Zurich. The residential people in Zurich going by tram is 32%. 26% are using their cars or motorbikes. And like 42% is going by foot or by bicycle. 6% of those 42 are bicycles. So in the 90s they had something called the historical compromise which is like this over the top statement when you're talking about um, transportation policy. The compromise was that no new parking would be built in Zurich unless they removed existing parking. We have just a fixed uh, amount of parking spaces. We are unable to build more parkings in the inner city. It's forbidden. So this is Rennweg um, in the heart of the Zurich. It's a pedestrianized zone that used to have parking on the surface, but nowadays it doesn't because all the parking that has been created underground, the city has, uh, since the 90s, decided that they will keep their parking fixed and uh, any new parking places that are created will be removed somewhere else. So there used to be cars here parked, nowadays uh, it's not the case. And as you can see, pedestrians love it. The main street in the city, or the one that is like the equivalent of Fifth Avenue or Times Square in Zurich, the one that the city really identifies with is Bahnhofstrasse, and that's uh, a street with really a lot of high-end shopping, and it's essentially a transit mall. We're riding uh, Limotken right now. It's a, it's a lane for public transport, bicycles and pedestrians mainly, but it's not so long ago. It's about 10 years ago. This was a main route through Zurich for cars. Down there, across the river, that road is called Limotke. A, a few years ago, that was a major car road, and they decided to, to take the cars out. At first, they were having a lot of uh, protesting from the shop owners because they were afraid they wouldn't get any customers. Now that it's done, what you're seeing is uh, there's people walking around, and when people walk around, they can actually go into the shops much more uh, easily, and they have seen uh, increases in their sales, so now they're pretty happy with what's been done. This is uh, one of the older generation trams, however it's a very comfortable vehicle, they keep it very clean, it's very well lit, it has a very good information system, you will see some screens in the front where you can see the connections to the, front, to the next services. Um, trams in Zurich are running very often, uh, usually you can get a very nice view of the city if you could just go around in the tram. It's always on time, amazingly on time. Uh, it's clean, it's orderly, it's labeled. There's this electronic control system, there's priority at every intersection for the public transport vehicles. Every five minute walk away, you'll bump into a transit stop, a tram stop specifically. You have real-time information at every station. You can uh, do your phone calls on the tram, you can do your SMS, your calendar, whatever. <laughs> it's living in the tram. They have a back section, that, which is like a living room where if you're in a family group it's nice to go there and kids love to sit there and I love to sit there also so I get on the tram and I have to raise the kids for this um, back seat you know it's, it's just so is everything they think about a lot of things that makes it work it's not just about convenience it's about style it's about um, attitude is about comfort. This is Polyban, it's a funicular railway between uh, Central, one of the main uh, public transit stops, the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology up on the mountain. It's uh, used heavily by students, professors and anyone else who needs to go up there. 
and it's completely part of the transit system. It started in the 70s. Uh, the Zurich traffic uh, system is very well known in Europe and all over the world. It controls all the stoplight um, around the edge of the city. They basically have a plan to make sure they don't have more than a certain amount of cars in the city at any one time. So if there, is, if there are too many cars, they slow down the entrance of cars into the cities. We have about 4,000, 4,500 sensors in the street. We stop the cars outside the city on the main roads. That they have to wait till it's free spaces in the city. And then the result is that we have no traffic jam in the city and all the traffic. You are once in the city, in the city suburb, you can flow with your car and you can drive. Okay, so what we see here is uh, one of our detectors, our sensors, and there's two more ahead to, uh, to look and count the cars that are coming and maybe to, uh, to uh, prolong or to shorten the green times. What they do is they limit the volume of cars that can enter the city to achieve a volume of cars in the city that is below the capacity so you don't have congestion in the city. And then you have the traffic jams outside of the city, but there there's more space and it doesn't disturb as many people. During the car ownership uh, per household is only 50%. Every second uh, household only has a car. It's, uh, it's not a lot. <laughs> and it's get getting uh, less and less. Over the last decades, the frequency of riders has really increased substantially on all modes of public transit at the same time that private car use has gone down. And you also see an increase in bicycle ridership in a city that is quite hilly, in fact. We're looking to uh, double the bicycle percentage in, in the next 10 years. There's an overall uh, city project that we're doing and we're trying to improve the, the infrastructure. It should be safe and it should be uh, bicycling for everyone, for like mothers with children, for like elderly people, uh, for business people, not only the sporty ones. For the general bicyclist, it's a good place to ride a bike. You don't always have dedicated bike lanes. Uh, a lot of times you are merged with traffic. Cars here are not as aggressive as they would be in the United States. The only real hazard besides the cars are the tram lines, the, the rail lines for the trams. And that just, you just have to know how to hit them at as right an angle as possible. Part of the really cool thing about living in Switzerland, but especially in Zurich, is that you get a sense that the government really wants to do good things for the population, for, the, for its citizens. So part of that is, uh, the renovation of the Lima and the lake. This area was not always like this. In fact, even just 20 years ago, this lake was very polluted. Uh, this used to be a railway station and some railway lines that were redeveloped into a space for public use. And it's basically right next to the river. There's infrastructure for people to take sun, to play volleyball. There's a, a cafe. It's really nice. It's a very trendy spot. It's a place to see and be seen in Zurich during the summer and it's uh, just wonderful. It's one of the factors that contributes to the livability of the city. Everybody loves the left. When you go to Zurich, you really see these policies in action. You see that the streets are quite pleasant, they're well designed, uh, they don't have high curbs, uh, they have lots of seating, uh, they're quiet, and really the only buzz is the buzz of people. Even though they have such progressive transportation policies overall, they still had a big fight in the 90s about parking. And why that is interesting to me is that it shows just how difficult parking policy is to get right.